There's so much fucking hair. I gotta get rid of it. Oh, I hate my dog. There's it's days like this, I wanna kill him. I didn't look at us and look what we look like, so the light's too much. Just, it is what it is. Okay. Well, <laughs> here we be. All right, listen, last week, we, we just have a lie. It's been two. It's It's been two weeks since we've done a podcast. No, it's not. No, we put one out two weeks ago, have we not? We did, we did, we did. We did put one out two weeks ago. What's happening? Our things look the exact same. It's you talking. <sighs> Fuck. That's me. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay, hi again. <laughs> I'm gonna figure this out one day. I mean, the chances are low, but like eventually I will, I will figure this out. The chances are low. The chances are low, but I, I like to give myself like high aim, you know? Um, okay, yeah, we were just saying, as I accidentally was recording only myself and not you, um, which also is like on par, but it's been two weeks. Just one. It's just been one week. <laughs> we've just, we've really been, Going through it. Going through it. It's, and we said it the last time too, because we were both sick. And we were, and we were sick and having some stuff happen. And I'm graduating, you're still having stuff happen. And that's that. Okay, but we're here now. We're here now. So let's do it. So let's fucking do it. We put ourselves in a new room for a new attitude, <laughs> <laughs> a fresh perspective. A fresh perspective. We're in my bedroom. Yeah. Um, welcome to my bedroom. Here we are. This is the door. Um, my dog and cat are on the other side of the door because they will be in here and be on top of us. Um, we're gonna do this week. So we went on Instagram. Oh, I, I guess I should introduce us. <laughs> I fucking do this every fucking time. I'm Cal. I'm 29. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, which I realized recently. Like, okay, so I went to, um, an interview today mm -hmm. because the summer I'm interning at a strength and conditioning program and I was like you know what I should have some financial means should have an income I should have an income anyways so I go to this interview today great interview and I tell the guy that my pronouns are they them but I realize now that I should in the boomer age that I should tell them my pronouns are they, them, meaning I do not use she, her. Oh, like, they, I just didn't think you would have to explain it. Right, <laughs> but you do, because like it's, I think what they think is that like you just don't want to be called a girl. But it's like- But they know what a pronoun is. But no, but like he, and it, it, like the poor guy, like I think he was like really trying to understand it because he'd be like, hey, can you, as if you were going to show a person this, or as if you'd like, a, a person came in or a human came in he said all those things but when he would talk about me he would say she and I was like okay you got like 50% we just gotta like knock over the last domino here homie and so I think I need to start telling people hey my pronouns are they them meaning I don't use she her yeah I think with a certain generation yeah because like I even explained and, he, and I explained like a lot of my background I was like back when I used to identify as female and he like understood all that. Yeah. I just don't think it clicked. <laughs> um, so my pronouns are they, them, theirs. Um, and let's see, a fun fact of the week. Fun fact of the week is I did pull the first all nighter I've pulled in like, I don't know, five years. 
of staring at my computer for my grad, like, capstone. Mm. And you realize how fucking old you are when it gets to, like, 3 in the morning and you're like, I ain't gonna make it. I ain't gonna make it here. And you're like, this is the end of the road for me. I'm, like, shaking. My eyes are visually impaired. But you recovered so quickly. I'm surprised. I did not recover quickly. I mean, I would have been still in bed. Yeah. To this day. A lot of caffeine. Yeah. You actually were in bed a lot today. Yeah. Okay, your turn. Um, You're, she's gonna speak up when she does this. <laughs> my name's Mary Helen, 25. Uh, my pronouns are she, they. Um, fun fact about me. Fun fact. You got it. Um, medically, I've just been going through it. <laughs> um, I have an abscess. <laughs> you do have an abscess. I mean, this is good. This is good to normalize. Yeah, I have an abscess in my right boob. Yeah. And it has, it started off, I guess, just like a, like a, like a mass. It was so random. You like came to me and you were like, hey, I think I have a lump in my boob. And I was like, okay, like whatever. Yeah, and like the amount of appointments I had to go to to figure out what this is, turns out it's an abscess. Like had a hospital visit along in there. <laughs> 50 different boob appointments. So many boob doctors. Yesterday was the last one and I was like, bro, like, and it was angry. It was red. Yeah. Mad. And without going into a lot of detail, there's just a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff <laughs> coming on. Um, Mary Ellen's just been through a boob journey. Um, and the saddest part is I had to take my nipple piercing out. You did. To, like two days ago. Like two days ago. It's unrelated. It is unrelated to the nipple piercing. It yeah, was just so. the pressure. The pressure it was putting from the, the swelling. But Mary Helen has been a trooper. Um, make sure, ladies or any humans with boobs, that yeah, you're rubbing your boobs. Rub them. If not, have your partner rub them. Yeah. Rub away. And an abscess comes on quick. It, it came on. Like, the next day, one day it was just there. It was like 12 hours. Yeah. It was insanity. Yeah. Okay, well. So there you go. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> Welcome to the shit show, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the shit show. Mary Helen does not have cancer. I am going to graduate, and that's the end. That's it. That, so we're making it. We're back to the podcast journey here or whatever. Back, the routine. The routine. It is Thursday. We're recording again. Yeah. It's nice out, so we're hopefully going to have more energy. Yeah, it is nice out. It's like 80 degrees out. Yeah. It's crazy. Okay. We put a pull up on Instagram. Don't look at my list yet. I can't see that far. You can't? Do you have bad vision? Yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to wear glasses every day. Sick. Um, so we put up a poll on Instagram. We were like, okay, what do you guys want to hear us talk about? And you guys voted that you want to hear us talk about our five most queer things we've done. Mm -hmm. We This is a very good perspective of who we are, is that I wrote down a list because I'm a type A human and a Virgo, and Mary Helen said, Right up here. I got it in my brain. And I was just thinking, I was like, do I even remember anything I thought about earlier? And I, I, I do. Okay. We're gonna hope so, because you just need five. Yeah, I just go with the flow, really. Yeah, go with the flow. Okay, it'll pop out. And you know what? We're gonna get better about posting on the stuff of the confessional boxes, because I need to do it. Because, like, we have input for sure. Yeah. And they're good. Actually, they're fucking really good. I'm so impressed with you guys that input shit. But I need to consistently keep putting it up so you guys put shit in. And I want you to know, like, if you're afraid to put shit in, don't. Because- You don't know who you are. We cannot find out who you are, but not only that, like, people are putting in good shit. Yeah. And, like, it's great, and we love it. Like, we are, it's never gonna go anywhere. So fucking put it in. Say the shit you've been waiting to say. <laughs> um, okay. Do you want to start with your queer snake? Mine are good, so, like... Well, I feel like I've talked about one I had just, like... Before. <laughs> um... That was the longest breath out of <laughs> It was like... <sighs> <laughs> You're like a pop can slowly opening. Um, like the actual queerest thing I've ever done, like yeah. stereotypical queerest thing, is I've talked about it before, and it, that was literally flying across the world for a girl that I had just met. The Austria girl. Yeah. Not only you flew, but you took trains. The, the amount of... The amount of... Transportation, transportation. Like the modes of transportation that you had to take. It was like bus, train... And then you had to walk, I'm sure, to get to her. Or did she pick you up no, from the airport? No, she picked me up from the airport. Okay, that's, that's at least nice. 
<laughs> but I mean, but I've never flown. First of all, I'd never flown. I have you ever been out of the country? Yeah. Okay. I'd only flown solo one time in my life, and that was to Florida. Hmm. But I was like getting picked up by my swim team in Florida. And but this was like my first time flying like solo like across the world. And to you, a girl that I hardly knew. In fact, like let's tell them the backstory. You met this girl for two days. Okay, to be fair, I'd hung out with her twice. But we talked a lot before we decided that I would go and visit. You hung out with this random person for two days and then how old were you? Could you even drink yet? Yeah, I was 22. If you were my daughter... I had just come out a month prior. I just could not imagine a lot... I mean, like, you're 22 years old. You could do whatever you want. You're so obviously... I but told like, my mom that it was a friend. Smart. <laughs> smart. I <laughs> said so I'm going to visit a friend. Like, not only... She, she, she knew. She knew. Right. Mom, it's just a friend that I'm going to rub my clit up against. She was like... My mom was like, what, what? And I was like, no, I'm going to visit going to visit a friend that I met here. Just a quick friend that her and I... And she knew, she knew exactly where what, it wasn't a friend. <laughs> Is it, like... Is it acceptable to be gay in Austria? I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. It's Europe. Whatever. But you took like 17 modes of travel just for, what, and a week? Of, and a lot of money. A lot of money. And like not Did she pay for any of it? She, I only paid for my to airline. What is, what is the, um... She paid for the hotel and food. Okay, that feels pretty fair. But what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Not the decency, but like the, the standards of like, over like country travel like if you go country to country what is what is the standard or like the policy between two queer people when you travel i would say more than five hours no more than eight hours to go visit someone to go visit someone like if i have to take a plane every time we see each other what is the policy is it that we just pay for our own shit well the thing was like i because because we weren't she didn't have a house there where was she she was visiting family oh god this is getting worse and so and she didn't want me to stay with her family because like yeah because she's not out she's not out well i mean she was to her sister she was like i met her sister but we were doing our own little like vacation thing okay so you split it so i she paid for all the hotels like all the hotels and you paid for your plane ticket and i paid for my pain, plane ticket i but like, and, like any souvenirs that i wanted right Okay, but like, what is it if you, you're flying to California? Yeah, but like, you'd generally be staying at someone's house. Right. So is it just like- And we, they would probably pay for like food, like- Yeah, I feel like that's fair. Like, yeah, if I'm spending like a thousand dollars to come see you. Yeah, currently like- I can't be also spending- No, I know, but I'm saying like, it, across country, like that is far shit. Yeah. And no. what if like, they can't leave? Yeah, then you're always going. Yeah. I mean, the plan the energy. was that she was going to come in the summer. Oh, I'm sure. And how did that turn <laughs> Well, she had a lot of friends. She went to school in Indiana. Right, but you, she didn't come. We broke up before then. Right, 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 right. That's what I'm saying. There was there was no next time. There was no next time. I mean, there was. I was supposed to go out and visit her in um, Israel. Mm-hmm. Like, I would, yeah. And I was like, that was what the plan was. Like, I was about to buy my ticket. But thank God I didn't. One, because we broke up. Two, uh -huh. because COVID hit. Oh wow. Oh my god, this was so soon. This was so recent. It was um, like the winter, like January. This was less than three years ago you did this. Yeah. I forget that you 22 was literally like two years ago. It was three years ago. Almost four. <laughs> Holy shit. No, this is all pretty recent stuff. No, I know, but I just like, I had never, like that story you've told me 900 times. It maybe. feels really long ago for me. It feels like a very different lifetime because I do think it is. I'm sure. I'm sure. Because like I lived in a different area. I had just come out. Like I met this girl one month after I came out, like before Thanksgiving, like right before Thanksgiving. I came out then, like I came out in October of, 20, of 2019. I flew to Austria in December of 2019. You're insane. I would have done the same shit. I would have done the same fucking shit. It's because when you first come out, you have a lot of intense feelings. Oh, like, yeah. Like, when you meet her and you're like... Uh, oh, my God. When I first came out, there was no... There was this girl I liked that was that was straight and, like, didn't... That liked me but could never like me. I used to travel three hours a weekend just to go see her. Yeah, and you do dumb shit when you first come out. I just Oh, my was, God. I would do the dumbest shit. I've done so... I've drove 16 hours. In three days, like and I drove six like hours and drove back. Feeling within you, and you're like, 
I must. <laughs> It's like a calling. It's a queer calling. Yeah, and you forget every other aspect of your life at that point. Right, you're like, all duties I used to have and all responsibilities are dead. But I almost do that whenever I meet anyone new. It's like you just kind of like... You, you, peacock? You like peacock your effort? Yeah, but like you like you forget like I used to like see my family a lot more like than I do now. And like you meet a new person, you're like, you're gonna be put on hold family. <laughs> I need you to, you're always gonna be there, so like you need to hold on. If you guys could just excuse me for a second. I cannot take all summer at dinner there. <laughs> I oh school, my god. School, like, you school week. like every Sunday. You should go this Sunday. I am. I am. My dad invited me. <laughs> Mary Helen's been neglecting their family because someone's come with the picture and now you're like, well, you'll well, be here when I get back. <laughs> Who? My family? Yeah. yeah I'm like, obsessing about this person. Yeah, like, you'll be there. Like, I'll go. I'll see you some. Like, I went to a week with my mom in Portugal. Like, we're good. Your mom offered you an over-the-seas trip. Of and I went. You, of course you're not going to say no. Well, I already said yes before I met this person. Okay. But, and I still, I still I still still said yes. <laughs> okay, that was good. That was good. Okay, my okay. number one. Okay, so. <laughs> I had someone move, let's say the equivalent of, um, we'll say California to Georgia. Like, they moved from the equivalency of California to Georgia. Why are you equivalency, not just saying where they moved from? I don't know, I just feel like it, it's like, okay, from, I had someone move from Utah to North Carolina for me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, so we had been dating for like six to eight months. That time range could be longer than it actually was, but in my brain, I remember as six to eight months. Okay. Could be wrong, okay? We're dating that long. We're like, you know what? We go. We don't even like spend that much time together. We actually just go on vacations together before we decide to really start dating and move in with each other. Like, we weren't like going to like see each other. Yeah. Like we were meeting up in random places all over the country. Oh. Yeah, I went to see her like twice. I think. Whatever. Anyways, so we meet. She drives all of her stuff from Utah to North Carolina. I'm about to tell you guys some of my bad shit. And she drives to North Carolina. We have been dating for six, eight months. It's maybe three months in. Maybe. I don't even know. I'm getting deployed, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in the Marine Corps. I'm getting deployed. And mind you, I'm, I'm like 20 years old. I'm like 20 or 21 years old. I get deployed. I ended up cheating on her i know listen i'm just fucking honest here i'm honest i'll own up to my shit okay during my deployment she asked me if i cheated on her what do i do you're honest i lied okay you lied <laughs> i told you this is the gayest thing i've done not the not the best thing i've done okay i lied about it i don't know how she figured it out like whatever fair enough she should have Okay, she figures it out. She decides that she's gonna move out during my deployment. I come back from deployment to come home to my very angry girlfriend to find out that I had been cheating on her, just emotionally, not physically. And I'm like devastated, like in myself, obviously. I cheated on her and I, I owned up to it yeah. at some point. And then we. <laughs> So she ends up leave. She ends up going to leave, and before she leaves, we went in our closet and basically divvied out who was gonna take what because, like, we shared everything. This is the gayest thing that's ever happened to me. We literally were like going through jeans, and I was like, you know what? You can have those ones. I was like, I walked in that closet and said, you can fucking have anything you want. Like, I I fucked this up, so you can take any of my shit that you want. So we literally sat in the closet and just like did that and with our clothes and, and things like that. And then she moved out. That was, I mean, how did you know this person? A friend of a friend. Oh, okay. A random friend of a friend. So she wasn't in the Marines. No, she was an ex-girlfriend of a friend's. Oh. Which probably wasn't great either. <laughs> now that I say that out loud. <laughs> Anyways. So I had a girl move across the country for me. 
I fucking emotionally cheated on her and we divvied up our closet like a, like two sisters and she moved out. <laughs> Is that like a gay thing though? Yeah, like who the fuck does That's that? That's like a bad human thing. I don't, well, first of all, she moved across the country for That's me. gay for her. I mean, that's gay for both of us. That's gay for both of you. Yeah. I Listen, it's definitely one of the worst queers things that I've done. No. I think we even might have tried to like reconnect after. Well, yeah, as they used to do. As we do, as we do. Yeah. We definitely we definitely spoke again. We definitely spoke again. Yeah. Great girl. Really really didn't do that one well. Okay, you <laughs> did. That's my number one. Um, I would say, in true lesbian fashion, mm -hmm. um, I told myself I was going to be able to casually date. I agree. And, um, I failed, so. Say more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, like, when, at the beginning of, like, this year, we decided together, mm -hmm. you and me, that we were going to go on a journey of casual dating. We were going to go on, I think, two dates a month. You were like, let's do two dates a month. Yeah. And as it turns out, we both went on one date. Correct. And that was it. And that is it. And now, and now I have not gone on any more dates with any other people. And now neither have I. So <laughs> that is, that is pretty queer. It's pretty queer. Yeah. But like, why would I if you found someone you like? <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, it's good. It's good. It's yeah, good. Yeah, like, why would I be like, you know what, you were fun, but I did tell my friend that we were, we were going to do two dates a month, so, like, bear with me, please. Did you say that? No, oh, God, no. Oh, I was no, like... No, but, like, you no, like, you found someone you like, you're not going to be like, can you sit here for a second? Uh, actually, the only person that went through with that is our straight friend. Is our straight friend. Cause we, <laughs> okay, but it's also a little bit easier for her. No, it's not... Okay, but if it was the easier for her... is bigger. But I'm saying if it's easier for her, she should have found someone sooner. The ratio is faster. Yeah, but like... in, But like... I'm just showing how Straight we are. people can truly casually date. Do you guys remember that last podcast when I told you that Mary Helen battles everything I say no matter what? Be just because she wants to? This is why. <laughs> I'm just saying it's easier to go on two dates. You know how hard it would have been for us to go on two different... Two dates... With, like, two different dates a month? the pool that we have here no we we're just giving them to each other we you know your turn to this one <laughs> no there's none of them people here take that one wouldn't do more for me maybe we, we did go on the date with the same person i know <laughs> actually i know a lot of queer people that do that they like they, they will like tell each other be like are you did you go on a date with that one because i don't want to go on a date with the one that you went on a date with yeah and it's because the pool is small it, no, I agree it's small. And, and you don't want to mix. You can't you can't put them in the same blender. But it's not like, you know, you had a full relationship with this girl. No, I think it's just funny is that what we did is we said we were going to go on two months or two dates a month. And Mary Helen went on one date. And <laughs> the girl she went on one date with, I previously went on a date with that girl. Like months earlier. Yeah, months earlier. And it, and it fizzled out. And it was just, it's just funny that like out of all the women. Out of all the women. <laughs> it's. One of the only ones I actually went on a date with, like, I only went on, like, four. And it was, that was one of the four. That was one. Yep. That's pretty queer. That's pretty queer. And we live in a big city. With big cities surrounding us. Yeah, but, like, how many dates have you gone with anyone in this city? Yeah. That's few. what I mean. Few. Few. Like, there's a lot of people here, but, like, where? Yeah, we're also both picky bitches. I agree. Okay, my next one is, um, well, I guess that's, yeah, okay. My next one is, I got my wedding date tattooed on me. <laughs> yeah? How'd that go? <laughs> and you know when they say, like, it's a curse, it's fucking true. It's so true. Do not, I repeat, do not get your wedding date, your partner's name, a ring tattoo finger. Do not get it done because it is a curse. 
And it's permanent. <laughs> and it's permanent. How much time? What are we at? Get the change anything? Oh shit. No, not yet. And no. Okay. But no. yeah, it's a curse. It's a curse. I, I it's a curse. I, it's one of the gayest things I've done. We did it immediately after we got married. Well, yeah, you're you know. You think it's forever? <laughs> I mean, aside from the fact that we got married six after months, six months after we met each other. Which is also kind of queer. No, that is very queer, but I've said that many times, so I yeah. wanted to leave that one out, and I wanted to include the fact that... It's tattooed on your body. Right, right. We were married longer than we had the initial knowing six months of each other. That's good. Yeah. Three years is pretty decent. <laughs> okay, your turn. Um, I would say... And this is like, this was a precursor to me coming out. I would go ahead and say, the intriguing like part of myself, like the intrigue that I had for any person that I knew that was an out lesbian that was my age. Say more. Like there were girls in college that were out and you're like, like you're not you're not like a trap. I mean, like some of them probably yes. Like, like you were obsessed just watching enamored. them. Enamored. Good word. Don't have word of the day. Enamored, and you're like, but you didn't know why. You want to watch every action and thing that they do because you're just studying. You're researching. Yeah, but like you, you. But at the time, like you didn't know why. And this goes along with like my childhood and like TV shows. Like if there was like a lesbian, you're like, that's one of my gay things. We'll talk about it. After this. Yeah, but you're just like, you why can't am I? Locked in. I get, why am I obsessed with you? And I, I'm not attracted to you at all. No, but like, I, I, it's enamored. No, I, I, so one of my gay things was that I was obsessed with Paige and what was her name? Alex? Paige and Alex from Degrassi. They, it was like the first time I had ever, as a teenager, like seen two women kiss. And Paige was like this cheerleader where Alex was like this bad girl, right? And I was obsessed. And you're just like, and then whenever they switch to another p people, you're like, no, no, go back to that. No, go back to that. I could not look away. I don't care about anyone else. I could, I was upset. You no, know, I understand exactly what you're saying. I actually still think I'm obsessed. Yeah, no, because I'm happy you say that. Because I, for the first time, I'm watching Pretty Little Liars. I don't know what that is. It's a TV show. No, I do not. I, I, I don't. I've never watched it is what I meant to say. So, yeah, I had never either. Yeah. So the girl I'm seeing is like, you've never watched it. And it's like, no, so we're watching it now. And it came out. In like 2010. Okay. So it's and it's a show that's a little bit ahead of its time, but they also say slim like as many shows around the time did some problematic things that like we don't say now. I'm sure. But there's an openly gay girl, like a, a main character. Mm-hmm. And everyone is like very like like nonchalant. <laughs> they don't make a big deal. All good. They don't even make a big deal about it. Like they don't say like, oh, like what do you guys do? Like they're not weird. They're just like, if someone doesn't ask you what scissoring is, that, that wasn't a real thing. Well, they, these were like kids in high school, so like no one was asking. Oh. But she helps like these girlfriends, and and even now I'm watching the show and I'm like, how much would that have helped you in the high school? I don't know if it would have. No, you were just. I still would have just been enamored, <laughs> but not knowing why. I <laughs> no who's to know? No, I get it. Listen, I was walking on campus. I so I go to Ohio State and I was walking on campus and I, I don't know if I look 30, but I assume as I'm walking on campus people assume that I'm just like an average student. And there was two like three queer women walking towards me. And I mean the way that they dead stared at me for so and that was like I get it. Like I wasn't upset. I like looked back and smiled because I was like, hey I I know what we're doing here. I just talked about my mom with this the other day. Like we were walking to get coffee, and we were when we were walking to the coffee shop, there was two women with their kids, mm -hmm. and obviously like uh, they were together. Yeah. And it's the look that you give each other. Yeah. And my mom and I like remember I turned to my mom and I'm like, a lesbian couple with kids with kids, and she's like, how do you know? And I was like, I said, what do you mean? How do I know? Like, can't you know? She's like, I try not to stereotype because you don't know anyone. I'm like that's fair, but like we gave each other the look, and she's like, what do you mean the look? And I was like, the look of like we know. Yeah, we know. Did you just go? Or did I just I go? Know. Where did we just go? The stair. That was you. How are you? It started before that. You're obsessed with like, like looking. Yeah, but then you went to Grassi. Oh yeah, so then it's you. Okay, you ready? Yes.
Okay, so nice to you. I have, we have two more each. Yes. And I'm gonna go with my, not like a heavy one, Ooh. but like I have like a little light one to end things off so we can end with a light I one. have a funny one to end off. Okay, okay perfect. <laughs> so I would say <laughs> I stayed in a relationship far too long. <laughs> One for absolutely no reason at all, other than comfort. Comfort. Yeah. And I don't know why I think it is kind of like a more queer thing to do, whereas we stay in a relationship, I think, a lot longer. And it wasn't like abusive in any sense. Like, no. that's not the reason I stayed. I mean, like, emotionally, perhaps. But, like, I think you you try to work on things without actually working on things because the, f and I, this is a horrendous reason to stay, stay in a relationship, but it's the fear of having to start over. And I told myself, like, so many times during the relationship, I was like, I'm fine to live like this forever. Like, you're like, I can settle for this. Like, because I, I truly don't think I can find anyone else. And I think that the only reason that is queer is because when you say that I don't think I can find anyone else is because, like, like you were saying earlier, like, our dating pool is smaller. Yeah. Tons of straight people stay with men or women that they're settling with, but, like, actually finding a queer person is really scary again. Yeah, because you're like... Because one of my biggest fears is like literally being alone. Well, not only being alone, yeah, I mean being alone for sure, but like when you live in a city and you're dating somebody and you're in the queer circle or cir like the circuit of queers, mm -hmm. like you know everyone. You're yeah. like, there's no one else. Like I, this is the end for me. If this, like I know everyone else <laughs> and you're like, this is the end. This is the end. And so I stayed for so long so unhappy like i mean it was not really a relationship it, it was like a friendship most of the time it was like a completely like even like a bad friendship like it wasn't it wasn't a good friendship it was a good friendship like i saw you more than i saw her you still yeah yeah like and, while you were in the relationship and and then i think it's then it's like the person i'm with now it's then you realize like this is what a, like it, this is what it should be like when two people like each other just even a general relationship <laughs> yeah so, um, that was, I mean, yeah, and I, and I feel like also with, like, queers, like, we do that a lot. Yeah, we, yeah. We either do one of two things. We stay with someone for extremely too long. Yeah. Or we turn into this ball of chaotic mess mm -hmm. and turn it into this explosion of 40 fucking things that go wrong and then you hate each other and never talk to each other again. Yeah, and I would say it was an amicable break, but first. Before you go on, <laughs> I want to say that your breakup was the most impressive breakup in lesbian history. It was approximately 160 seconds. Yeah. Appro a hundred and Mary but, Helen texted me three minutes later. But that just goes to show what kind of person this was. No, I, I mean, totally she said agree. nothing. She was like And you have not spoken since. Not a singular word. And you have not like there's no remorse about not speaking. None at all. No. That's what's my but like this breakup was basically Mary Helen went in, told them, and then left. Like, that was it. But, like, it, it, it just goes to show, like, and it wasn't even, like, she didn't even try to fight for it. That was the straightest thing of this relationship. She literally walked in, I said, this isn't, I'm not happy anymore. And she said, okay. And basically got up and left. <laughs> like, it wasn't even, I mean, she said, sorry. Sorry. Because, you know, it was a follow. Yeah. <laughs> but it was insane. Like, first of all, I had never broken up with anyone before. <sighs> Yeah, you've never broken up with anybody before? You've oh, no, I have. Okay. But it wasn't like that. Like, this was, like, a long relationship. And, mm -hmm. and like, my biggest fear is that people were going to think, like, oh, you moved on too fast. But, like, truly speaking, I was sad for about a day. Maybe. And then I realized, like, once I got out of the routine of, like, what we used to do, like, like the talking, like, once I realized, like, I was going to be speaking to her again, after, like, a day, I was like, oh, like, I'm fine now. We good. Which goes to show how much I should not have been in that relationship to begin with. Oh, absolutely. My mom asked me a question. She was like, well, like, was it always like that? I'm like, no, like the first couple months were great. Out of the past two years. Out of the past, um, two and a half. Like, I just, I can't. So yeah, we're doing great now. I mean, like my body isn't, but like my mind is. 
is. Like, we're in a better space. <laughs> My mind is doing better now. Like, I do feel truly, like, wanted and valued by the person that I am seeing now. And that's literally all Snaps. I was looking for. Yeah. That's good. That's good. What a lovely time. What a lovely time. Okay. My next one, this is so gay. Because, okay, so I have a specific thing that I want to talk about. But basically, like, when I first came out, like, let's say the first five years, I didn't want to do anything that resembled straight. Yeah. So, like... You rejected heterosexuality. I, I rejected... Which I still do. Eh, right. Because you're in the first five years. But, like, I rejected heterosexuality of, like, all sorts. Like, I acted as if I hated all men. I hated their existence. That their body was disgusting to me. That, like, I didn't want to look like a man. I didn't want to be anything like a guy. I just wanted to be... I just wanted nothing to resemble straight. Of me, my relationship, of my... What my atmosphere look like like I mean at all so in the sense of like even though I, I had a lot of qualities about me that resemble a really like masculine thing mm -hmm. I like hated that self that about me because I wanted to just be queer yeah like I didn't want to be in the group of like resembling men and so like I rejected a lot of that but the thing I rejected most of that is strap on sex because I I like when I first came out I was like so gung-ho gay I don't know if we should trend that gung-ho gay I was so gung-ho gay that I was like no I don't want to fucking strap something to me that resembles a dick like I don't want that hetero life of mm -hmm. this or that that I refuse like any toys any things that look like phallic shaped <laughs> like anything of that and it was just the most gay thing of me to do was to be like reject all all things that were hetero yeah all things penetration well i don't know if i reject penetration but like penetration with other objects yes with other objects but so like i just i rejected all of it all of it anything that was like remotely straight i was like that's not part of my I life i would say i am in an era mm-hmm of just like the company that I want to be in the majority of my time existing is generally not with a bunch of straight men. Yeah. I just hang out with straight men all the time and I love it now. Yeah. I am just like, it's, I think because like I'm fine hanging out like a friend group. I love a mixed group of company. Yeah. But when it's just straight men, you do find yourself and you hear them say things and you're like, no, yeah, I agree. You know what? Um, you almost need, like, a group of... You need mixed company. Because yeah. when they're all together, they don't behave. No, I agree. <laughs> like, my boy group does not behave. Yeah, no, and... But they are pretty woke. Yeah, yeah, but, like, you have to pound them with knowledge. I do. I do, constantly. Like, when it was, like, I don't know, a couple months ago, we were all... It was basically just you and me and the girl I was seeing. Mm-hmm. And all of the guys. Mm hmm And they just get really rowdy together. And they say things and you're like, that wasn't the one. That wasn't the one. You gotta tone it down. You can't do they the just scissoring get, they, thing. They get excited. <laughs> and they don't have a lot of queer friends. I think for a lot of them, we are their queer... We're their learning curve. We're their learning curve. And we're so patient. Oh, because I love them. But I love them, and I love that they have questions, and I love that they're accepting, and mm -hmm. I love that they would defend us with their every being. Oh, 100%. But they are dumb males. But they are dumb males. And then, and but then you think that everyone should be like them. Like, everyone should be in your accepting bubble, and then you find yourself around other straight males. And yes. you're like, this isn't the same. Yes. This isn't the same, and I don't like you. No, I agree. So I, like, if I were to choose my company... It would probably not be any be other straight male than like the four that we five have. Five that we have. Yeah. Because we've broken them in. We've broken them in. And I think it's also important to have diversity. Like and we have they, diversity. They that know. Group. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> they know everything. But like to having to like bring another one in and like their friends know. Yeah. Like it, who they bring in. Yeah. Who but like bring. complete outsider ones, like it's so hard to like, it is. try to explain more things. It is. Because you know, they don't know their role yet. And right. so I just find like, myself... Like, stand down, old like, boy. Really, really, like, we have a lovely little queer group. 
We do. And it's so much fun. We do have a queer group, but it's really good. But it, it is hard to, I think, mix that. And it did take me a long time to hang out with straight men. Because I had, because basically, like, as you said, you have to train them. Like, well, yeah. not only train them, because, like, so many, especially white men, like, white straight men have to step out of their little bubble and be like, oh, shit. Like, well, you really mean it. And, like, we're, we're like, fuck yeah, we mean it. Like, you just haven't ever realized this. But actually, most of the ethnic guys that we have are really good about it. Well, I mean, I think a lot of, like, in general, like, it's a very common thing. Not saying that, like, the group of guys we hang out, like, do this, but, like, the sexualization of... Oh, the sexual situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, they'll still make little comments yeah. in there, and you're like... Right. But, like, we also openly talk about sex so much that it doesn't seem like it's so taboo. But if you bring in any other queer person that doesn't know yeah. them, you're like, ah, 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 knock it up. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a few times where I've had to post up our boys and tell them that I'm going to imprint my tattoos on their face if they don't shut the fuck up. But they're receptive to criticism. So receptive. And that's all you can ask. That's all you can ask. They'll turn right into baby bottoms. Yeah. And be like, I'm sorry, I love you. <laughs> and they're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. No, it's true. Okay, you got your next one? Your yeah. fluffy one. Yeah, my fluffy one. That's just like a little fun one. Um, Mine's just going to be so relatable. I would say, I very quickly after coming out needed myself to look more queer. Mm. So I will go with you through my journey. <laughs> Please of go. One, looks. And two, the things I did to make myself look more queer because I wanted people to know. Mm-hmm. So I would say very soon after coming out, I got my nose pierced. Okay. And I Hoop got- Hooper stud? Well, when you first get a pierced, I want you to get a stud. Okay. Did you stay stud? And then I went to hoop. Hoop. And then is when I realized what it looked like. Like what the piercing, like the hole looked like. Because when you have a stud, it covered my little infection that I had. Oh. And then when I switched to a little hoop, I was like, oh, mm-mm. It was infected. It was. I mean, I had a keloid. It wasn't infected. Oh. Yet, but it was just not cute. Yeah. It was just like a sore. Okay. And so I was like, and we're gonna take it out. I'm up. But it That's was so much fun while it lasted. I have only like a couple pictures of me and my little nose piercing. I also got so many queer women have nose posts. I figured yeah. that I needed a tattoo that was visible. <laughs> As every one, every gay person should. So this is my tattoo. I don't have one. I'll explain it to. You. What does it say? What is rare is wonderful in Gaelic, which is Irish. Gaelic. Gaelic. And, um, and I needed like a visible tattoo. And I do remember taking a picture like after, and it wasn't like to show off my tattoo, but I was like, I was like, you need to post on my Instagram that shows that I have a tattoo that's visible. For, you know, all the queers that followed me, didn't know any. <laughs> um, and then it was the undercut. The undercut, the undercut. And let me tell you, once you have an undercut, this is a natural journey. Yeah, it is a natural journey. But I started off very feminine. I was I had leftover femininity yeah. in college. Leftover. <laughs> but I would say that I added in like a couple more residual femininity. <laughs> residual femininity, yeah. It was just leftover from my sorority days. And um, I remember like being in Indiana that's when I lived in Indiana and I lived with my roommate and I'd be like, Do I look gay? <laughs> and I'd like have a flannel on. How many times is it true that True or not true, all you gay people walk out to your friends and you're like, do I look gay enough? <laughs> and it's a thing. And, and like now, it's, do I look too gay? <laughs> do I look like I'm going to get hung at do the I look local like I'm get circle K? <laughs> <laughs> do I look like I'm going to get hate crimed? But, because we live in an area. <laughs> but the answer is yes. The answer is yes. But like, now I like really understand like, for our feminine friend lesbians that mm -hmm. like it's a constant thing for them no one thinks that they're gay no I, I agree and i remember when i first came out and like all you wanted to look was gay like when you come out you're like well i'm gay but no one no, no one gets to know from me just walking down the street like that is yeah if you want to call it a privilege that we have yeah is that only really that we're recognized by other queers right but you have to do swap that out for harassment. Right, right, it's true. Actually, and one other thing that I will say, it privileges us a little bit with men where they're like, I'm just gonna leave that one alone. <laughs> Which I'm like, thank fucking God. But you would think, but no. Oh, I, maybe me. in my most masculine state, have been hit on by men and I'm just like- Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, but hit on by men. But generally speaking, no, they, they, they live alone. Yeah. One time they're not, they, they would rather play a game of basketball with us than, uh, yes, than yes. buy a drink. 
right. One time I was at the bar with my with my girlfriend and we were there and she was gorgeous and my ex-girlfriend and um and we were there and this guy like aggressively was telling me how beautiful and how like attractive I was. <laughs> my girlfriend was like, what the fuck? <laughs> She was like, am I going to be worried about taking you out that men are going to hit on you? And, I was, and it would continue to happen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you look great, babe. No big deal. <laughs> but like, it's so true that men still do. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They idolize it. They but, idolize it. But it's not as common, obviously, I think, as our feminine counterparts. Right. And, and when, No. And when we're all walking down the street at 10 p.m., it's less common for us to get harassed than you are. More harassed on the sense that they want to stab me rather than try to sexually abuse me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, on the turn of that. It should just be light. Uh, I'm sorry. It, no, mine's light. No, I was trying to be light and fluffy with it. And then I went to rape. <laughs> and then we just went to hate crime. Yeah, that was mean. But you know what? That's the reality of the situation. <laughs> That's where we're at. Okay, so I wrote this one down and I wrote this one down because I think it's funny and so true. But when, okay, so this is like early stages, like go back to like 18, 19, 20 year old Cal, so that's 12 years ago. When I first started to realize that I liked women, mm -hmm. in the, you know when like you start hanging out with like the first girls that you like, and you're, you get like embarrassed that you're getting wet from this, but like, but I'm saying like you don't know what's happening. Oh. Like when you're trying to figure out what's happening yeah. and you're like, why am I soaking? Why am I so? I need to go to the bathroom. I need to go to my bedroom. I need to find anything in this fucking and like, house. Stop. <laughs> and you're like, I will go to the kitchen. I will find a paper towel. I will do something because this cannot go through my hands. Like the, anything, I would do anything to make sure that that girl did not know that I was more wet than her or like that I was. Oh, so overly excited about this. And that this. is the female boner. And that is the female boner. But, like, why is it so true? I used to go in, like, bathrooms, and they'd be like, you just went to the bathroom. I'm like, listen, let me live. Wipe it up. I, need to, I need to wipe it up. I need to... Do you have a tissue, a rag, a towel, a dog? I need something to wipe this up. This happens... A caution sign. This happened, like, recently to me. Mm -hmm. When I first started hanging out with this girl. Yeah. That I was... I mean, like, literally I could just be around her. <laughs> Soaking, and I'm like, what the fuck? And, it's, <laughs> and you relax. And I really like, D -d -d get your shit together. <laughs> Don't embarrass me when I'm doing anything. Don't embarrass me. We're sitting here. We're literally cuddling. Her butt is just touching me. I cannot. <laughs> and and it like it has calmed down a bit just from like you know the presence of her. Yeah. But like, I and it's the for no reason at all that you feel embarrassed. Like, oh my gosh, she's gonna know. Or like she's gonna feel it somehow. Right. It's like and it shouldn't be an embarrassment thing. It should be, first of all, flattering. It's your queer trauma being like, no, no. And now I just say like, you're welcome. Right. Like now, like if I'm cuddling with a girl and I can feel that she's wet, I'm like, fuck yeah. This is hot as fuck. Yeah. And now, but like for the longest time, I was like, god damn, like that is embarrassing. No, I know, but like that's what I'm saying. And there's nothing you can do. Like once it has soaked through the underwear. You it's can't the best. Dry it up. It's I can't dry. <sighs> <laughs> but like honestly, at the early stages, that was that's just such a queer thing that I was just like embarrassed. Well, it's because I now realize it. Why? Yeah. It's because it never happened with men. No, it it's never like happened a very with men. New thing for me. Right. Like the last couple mm. years of just being wet in general. First, like I remember, like you know, like you hear like. You could be watching a TV show or like a movie and like a section of the guy's like, you're so wet. And I'm like, what do you mean she's wet? <laughs> what do you, what's that? <laughs> and, and now your girl will put your hand, like, if now she can like literally like whisper on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> now she can just put her hand on my neck of and just it, passing by me and I'm like, woo, okay. <laughs> it's anything. It's honestly anything. So there's like more wet people in general and I am one of those people. I don't think I'm one of those people, but... I, I do I know. Am. No, but that's pretty normal. That's so normal. And honestly, I will say this. It is the hottest thing when someone is wet, and not only when they're wet and you can feel it, but when they show you. Like when you're at somewhere and they take your hand to show you, oh. and you're like, dear lord, bury me right here because this is the fucking end for me. Like if you show me, I cannot. I cannot. I will bury me. But like the worst one happens, like sometimes it just happens in areas and you're like, 
This is inconvenient. This is not the time. This is not the time. Please get off my no, lap. I'm uncomfy. Please not. Please remove your hand from my thigh and sit on your side. <laughs> we are at family dinner. Mm -hmm. Put your hand over there. I can't do anything about it right yeah. now. Do not look at me. Do not. I can feel you looking at me. Do not look at me like that. Your eye. I see yeah. your eye. I can feel your eyes. Do you wink. Do not wink. There was a little low cut. Pull it up. <laughs> Pull up your shirt. She's wearing a crop top. Pull it down. <laughs> Don't put it on its own neck. I can't I can handle this. Fucking ankle. <laughs> Your eyebrows are fucking doing it for me. <laughs> You're low. But no, that's for real. That's one of mine. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Well, that was a light one. We had not a light one. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, okay, well, let's let's talk about um, our... So I, I started doing this thing where I put in um, little prompts. Yeah. Of It makes it easier when people need to confess. I think, it's, I think it's easier. And I'm just going to do... The, okay. I'm just going to do the most common. Because I think it's most common. Oh, the, the most common. The most common answer. Um, so the prompt was, was that I asked everybody, I said, what is the one thing that you tried when, like, when you're trying a sexual act and it surprised you? And I was like, okay, I think that's funny. But before that, I want to say, I know, aren't those surprising? Yeah. I know. Okay. That the fact that two people put the same thing and they're very different. So, okay, I'm going to read the top two that I think are the most surprising. So this one, these two wrote, okay, one goes, nipple clamps or when my partner bites me, who would have thought? Okay, next person, nipple clamps. I thought I was going to hate them, but turns out the stimmy, I love that they wrote stimmy, the stimmy, the, the stimmy feels nice. Also, self-penetration while masturbating gets me off 100% of the time. Snaps to that, same. Um, I, okay, but nipple clamps would be low on my sex toy list. Yeah. I don't even own them. Like, on the list of sex toys that I have or that I'm interested, that is pretty low for me. Of, of, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, but you want to know what? Three, no, two of the past girls that I've dated have extremely sensitive nipples. Yes, yeah, so it's like a clamp can only, would it would just be horrendous. No, they'd love it. They'd have to be the type of girls that like pain. Yeah, I, yeah. Cause you can't, you can't have nipple clamps and not like pain. Yeah. How, how would you do with a nipple clamp? How would I? Yeah. Not in your current state, but <laughs> not with the I current. Even, I don't know if I can think about it right now. Yeah. I, my nipples have no sensitivity, and that could be because of my breast reduction, or but like even before that, I just really didn't have a lot of sensitivity. I think you would have to be a person that had really sensitive nipples, and my nipples are like, they're like half sensitive. Like they're like, I enjoy them being played with during yeah. sex, but like, it's not imperative for me. Yeah. But I like enjoy it. I think I enjoy more that someone else enjoys doing it. Yeah. No, okay. I see what you're saying. Um, so I don't know how much a nipple clamp would do for me. Yeah. The but only I think it would be more of like them being turned on the fact that my nipples are clamped. So, like, I would be like, okay, like, that does it for them. Yeah, like, okay, like, go ahead. Yeah, like, go ahead. Okay. But what I do like about nipple play in just general is that you're so close to your partner. And I love that. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, the look down, stop. Like, my nipples, like, I, they may not be the most sensitive in the world, but they get hurt very easily. <laughs> I don't know if that's, like, a, like, a, why? Why your nipples get hard easily? Yeah, like, you can just, like, woo and then just right into okay. firm up. Firm up. I don't know. Nipple clamps, I'm gonna add to the list. I'm gonna add to the list. I, I'm intrigued now. You guys got me intrigued. I wanna know. I wanna know. I mean, like, I've had my nipples clamped before, but that's during a piercing situation, so it's just not the same. Yeah. That's good. And how was it? Well, I mean, I was in a, it wasn't the same, like, you're, wasn't not, you're not in the same You weren't stimulated there. No, you're not in the same vibe. No you're about stimmy. to stab with a needle. No stimmy. So you're not even thinking about if you like it or not. Also, let's touch on the fact that that person said, when my partner bites me. You're like, like what kind of bite? where? No, no, no. There's I've been bit many times, but like, where is my first question? Yeah, like where? where is the most common? Hard by right. Hard by like, are we are we making marks here? Like I had a I knew a girl in college that liked to be bit hard, like had bruises from it, mm. and I was like, um, I think the inside thigh is a pretty normal spot to be bit. I was like a little lump bite. Yeah, like a like a like a little no. I'm, yeah. <laughs> but not like a, and you know what I think about is when Squidward tried the Krabby Patty and you just see his mouth bite the smallest. That's what I was thinking about. A nibble. Um, okay. And then 
dirty talk in my ear when they're getting me to come. Did not realize how much of a turn on that would be for me. Listen, I have a confession myself. I fucking love dirty talk. I knew you would. Oh, I love it. I love it. Of course you know I love it because the daddy thing. Um, but listen, I love all of it. I love like, <laughs> the only thing I don't get behind in like my sense, I don't get behind, I'm not gonna yuck someone's yum, is humiliation. Degradation. Yes, and I don't degrade. And yeah. I don't like any of that stuff. But like, ownership kind of deal. Not like, not like predator prey kind of deal. Not like pet kind of deal. Like this is yours or, or like, I belong to you. Like that type of stuff. Yeah. Love. Okay. Will die. Will commands. I love being in control. Love dirty talk. Dirty talk is one of my tops without a doubt. I would say I like people dirty talk to me. Okay. I'm not great at it. Okay. I'm an awkward human. <laughs> you're not an awkward human. I don't think you're awkward. I don't even talk about I just, I just, it never comes to my head. Right. You're, so you're in focus mode. I would have to really force it. Right. And then. Like how, you know how your phone goes on, like, do not disturb. You go on focus mode. Focus mode, yeah. And it would just. I mean, like, go ahead, dirty talk me all you want. I love it. But I cannot respond. I cannot respond. I cannot respond. Great. Good job. Okay. <laughs> no, I love dirty talk. So bravo to the person with dirty talk. Okay, so for next week, what we want is we, we want to know what's one thing you could not tell your ex. So, like, whether that's maybe something that you were embarrassed of or you didn't like about them or a red flag about them or that you see now that you didn't see then, um, something about their sex, something about cheating on them, anything. Fucking tell us anything. For example, someone wrote this. I'll just make, give you an example of one of the ones for next week. Shorts. Yeah. I couldn't tell him that seeing in shorts gave me the ick because it's like very unreasonable of me. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. It's so funny. But, but I understand. For no reason at all do I understand. There are so many things that make sense about that. Yeah, and you're like thinking about, you're like, imagine like being with a man in the winter and you only see this man in pants or no pants. And then he puts on shorts and you're like, oh. Right, like, like girls in dresses with tennis shoes gives me the ick for no reason at all. It doesn't look bad. It's not, it just, I, I don't know why it gives me the ick. It makes no sense to me. I don't know what I would say gives me the ick. But like, I, and like, it's just, it's just not one of my things. Mm -hmm. Or thigh high boots. I fucking hate thigh high boots. They are so bizarre to me. Thigh high boots make no sense to me. Yeah, Someone please you know explain what thigh this. High boots, what? <laughs> you remember when Patrick was <laughs> yes. in the with the thigh high boots? <laughs> yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. Wow. Okay, so go in next week. To, or I'm going to post it every fucking day. That's my mission. Okay. Every day next week, I'm going to post it of the confessional, go in there, tell us the one thing, the, the red flag, the thing you hated about their sex, the thing you hated that they said, the most annoying thing, or, or just anything about your ex that you could never tell them. Mm -hmm. I want to know the deeds. So go in, we'll post it, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. See you.